Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another series of online lessons. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like for this video. Now, in today's lesson, we are in complex number systems and basically we'll be continuing with what we've studied so far. We were looking at how to simplify complex numbers and here we'll simplify these complex numbers that are here and maybe the only two odd ones out uh, finding the reciprocal and finding the square root or the fifth root. So we'll look at how to do this. So where we have to find the square root, the fourth root, the fifth root, and so on and so forth. Then hopefully this video won't be too long if we include this, but um, this is basically our focus. Then um, we'll move on from there. So the first one asks us to simplify 2 plus 3i multiplied by 4 minus i or the power 2 over 2 plus i. So simplifying this, we'll start with this part. So simplifying that, we have a uh, 16. So we have 2 plus 3i. Then we have times 16 uh, minus 8i minus 1. So basically, this is a 4 minus i times 4 minus i. So when you distribute that, you're going to have that. So this is over 2 plus i, okay? Of which when simplified on top, we're going to have 2 plus 3i multiplied by 15 minus 8i all over 2 plus i then here we expand the numerator further so that is 2 times that that will be 30 negative 16i plus 45i 45i then um, negative 3 3 times negative 8 that will give us negative 24 negative 24 then we have i times i it will be i squared so i squared that is negative one negative one times this negative it will give us positive 24 all over 2 plus i and here we simplify the numerator so we say we group the real parts so this is this and that that will give us 54 and subtracting this and that that will give us 29 then um, 29 over 2 plus i. Then we know if we have a complex number on the numerator and at the bottom, we want to conjugate the bottom so that we introduce the, adjoint, the, the conjugate. So that is a 2. Then the sign of uh, the, the imaginary part changes. So if it is positive, it becomes negative. If it is negative, it becomes positive. So that is two minus i in this case. Then we also multiply by a conjugate of the denominator on top. That is two minus i like that. So we put in brackets. So this is this in brackets times that and this in brackets times that. I'll show you a very simple trick that you have to do here. So, but basically the numerator, what you just do for the numerator, when you're multiplying a complex number and its conjugate, what you just have to do is you get the real part, you square it minus the imaginary part, you square it as well. So I'll put Y, so minus the imaginary part squared. So in this sense, the real part is I mean 2, so we get the real part squared, so which is 2 squared, that is 2 squared minus the imaginary part, so which is i squared, okay? And uh, on top we just distribute, so I'm going to explain this uh, with another example so that you understand. Then we distribute 2 times 54, that is 108, 2 times... Uh, Two times uh, what? Two times twenty-nine i, so that would be plus i of uh, fifty-eight. Then uh, we have um, negative negative i fifty-four 
then this would be negative i times negative i that is negative 1 times 1 that would be positive 29 so that is plus 29 <clears> then <throat> basically this simplifies to the numerator we have uh, 137 and this simplifies to plus i4 what is a 4 squared i mean 2 squared that is 4 minus what is i squared i squared that is negative 1 so negative 1 times negative here it would be 4 plus 1 which is 5 so this basically is 5 so now this is what i was talking about so if you have uh, for instance if z is equals to let's say um, 7 plus 4i let me use this uh, example here then you are multiplying 7 let me say you're asked to find 7 this is 7 i don't know why i'm writing z so you're asked to find 7 plus 4i times its conjugate so its conjugate that is 7 the sign changes which is negative 4i so remember our trick is to say this is just equals to the real part squared which is 7 from the original so we get the original the real part squared that is 7 squared minus the imaginary part squared so that is 4i squared then basically what we do is the real part squared that is 49 then minus the imaginary part this two would distribute inside so this is um, the same thing as 4 to the power 2 and i to the power 2 so that is 4 to the power 2 times i to the power 2 so this is uh, actually equal to 49 then i to the power 2 is basically negative negative 1 so negative 1 so minus negative and this is 16 so this simply adds up which is a uh, 49 plus 16 okay which is the same thing that you would get if you were to expand this because when you look at this closely this is uh, more like the completing of um, of a square okay if this is your a minus b this is equals to a minus b square i mean a squared let me put this let me put it this way if you have a squared minus b squared this is basically equal to a minus b and a plus b and when you look closely when you're multiplying a complex number and its conjugate is the same thing as a plus b and a minus b so which is you just get the a squared and the b squared like that so that is a shortcut for you to do or for you to note when you are working out complex numbers so that is that so it will save you a lot of time especially in the exam so now from here we have to write this into real parts and imaginary parts so this will be equals to 137 over 5 because the 5 is applying to both plus i 4 over 5 and that will basically be a solution to the first question so let me just uh, write it here so that is that 137 over 5 plus i over 4 so then we go to the second question so for this one we'll start with exp uh, simplifying what is inside here so this is a uh, i which is just i minus i to the power 2 so this is like this i to the power 2 that is a uh, negative 1 plus i to the power 3 that is negative i minus i to the power 4 that is 1 so that is positive 1 plus i to the power 5 that is i minus i to the power 6 that is negative 1 so this will be to the power 2 so now simplifying this we have um, here we're going to have plus 1 here we have negative i here we have negative 1 and here plus 1 so we see that um, this and uh, this is positive 1 and this negative will cancel out this is i and this negative i will cancel out 
and what we're just going to remain with is this i this is positive one and this so that is one plus i then to the power four to the power two okay so that is what we're going to remain with when we simplify inside here and um add so this basically is equal to we expand this so this is a uh, one squared so this is equal to one plus i times one plus i or if you want you can use the binomial theorem which we learned so but basically this is equals to that and that is one plus two i minus one when you expand and this and that will cancel out and the final answer will be two i so basically um this simplifies to two i so let me just put it two i there so this simplifies to 2i, okay? So that is on that one. Then we come on question number two here, find the modulus and amplitude. So there are two questions, modulus and amplitude. So modulus, we just put the modulus of five minus three i there. So modulus of a real part plus an imaginary part like that, So modulus of the real part and the imaginary part is equals to the root of the real part squared in brackets like that plus the imaginary part. So you see that we get the coefficient of the i there. So the coefficient of the i, which is uh, the, the y, so the imaginary part squared. So in this case, we're going to have root of the real part, which is 5. So we say 5 squared plus the imaginary part, which is negative three squared. So now this will be equals to root of five squared, that will be 25, then plus three. So you should be very careful here when punching this on your calculator. So make sure that you put parentheses or these brackets, then you square, because if you just write negative three, then squared, this would be totally different to negative three squared. And your calculator some calculators will read it correctly but others will not read it correctly so you should be very careful when you punch negative three squared or whatever negative two squared some calculators will read it wrongly so put parentheses like this or these brackets then you square and we see that uh, we get um, positive nine so for those that are getting negative nine um, you have a mistake there so we just add so this will give us um 33 that is 33 all right so modulus of 5 minus uh 3i is equals to 33 then um they've also asked for the amplitude so the amplitude also known as the direction so the direction of the amplitude is the angle theta for which this um is suspended so theta is just equal to the tan inverse of the real the imaginary part over the real part so same thing x the y is uh, the imaginary part so in this case the imaginary part is negative three so our theta will be equal to the tan inverse of negative three over five so we punch that on our calculator we're getting, so we get negative 30.96 degrees. So that is our amplitude. So that is for question number two. Then uh, question number number two, two. So this is two, one, then we are on two, two. Find the reciprocal of negative five minus two i. So this is very interesting. All right, so I've just put our answers there so that um, is clear so modulus of 5 minus 3i is equal to that and the magnitude the amplitude is that then for the reciprocal so the reciprocal of z is just uh one over z so that is the reciprocal basically the inverse so in this case the reciprocal will be equal to one over our z is this which is negative 5 minus 2i now what we want to do is we want to have the real part alone and the imaginary part alone 
and uh, how we can do that is by introducing the conjugate of the denominator so we say negative 5 then the sign of the imaginary part changes so this time it's negative so it becomes plus 2i then we multiply with the same on the uh, denominator numerator so that is negative 5 plus 2i so this basically we we'll just call it z to the negative 1 so z to the negative 1 will be equal to so we multiply this and 1 that will give us a negative 5 plus 2i then here we use our trick so we just get the real part which is negative 5 squared minus the imaginary part which is a negative you get the negative there so that is negative 2i squared so let me put uh, so you get everything negative 2 negative 2 negative 2i squared so notice there is a negative there despite being a negative so we get the real part which is this and the imaginary part which is that so we just square that so that is a shortcut so this will be equals to negative 5 plus 2i then negative 5 then square that is 25 minus inside here we have uh, two things happening here so we have um, the 2 is distributed to i and it is also distributed to negative 2 so this is something as negative 2 squared times i squared like that so it's just a knot then um, this basically becomes equal to negative 5 plus 2i all over 25 minus so uh, this will be positive 4 i squared that will be positive 4 so this is positive 4 then i to the power 2 that will be negative 1 so negative 1 times this negative this will make be to be a positive so this is negative 5 plus 2i <clears throat> all over 9 which simplifies to negative 5 over 9 plus i2 over 9. So this is basically the reciprocal of, um, of z. Okay, so that is uh, the reciprocal of z, which is equal to negative 5 minus 2i. All right, so basically that's the reciprocal. Now we come to finding the roots of uh, a complex number. This is our starring or the, the main concept for the lesson today. So basically there is a formula for you to use to find the root of a complex number. So if we have a complex number z which has a real part and an imaginary part, the nth root, this could be the fourth root, the fifth root, the sixth root, whatever. So in this case, nth root is, the n is two. So the nth root of this complex number <clears throat> is basically equal to the nth root of the radius, then open brackets, cos of theta plus 2 pi k all over n plus i, again the same thing, sine theta I'm just write theta plus 2 pi k 2 pi k all over n like that then where now r or we'll start with n where n is equals to the nth root in this case we are looking for the square root so n is equals to 2 <clears throat> n is equals to 2 the cube root cube root that is n is equals to 3 and so forth and so on and so forth so n is equals to 2 the fourth root the fifth root the sixth root and so on and so forth n is the nth root so the square root n is equals to 2 all right so n is equals to 2 in this case and r is equal to the root of you get the real part you square it 
So that is the root part squared plus the imaginary part squared. That is how you find your R. Then your theta here is found using the formula theta is equals to tan inverse of the imaginary part over the real part. Okay. Then there is uh, the K. So K is basically numbers from zero all the way so 0, 1, all the way to the last number should be n minus 1. So where n is this? So in this case, k values start from 0, and the last number is n minus 1. So n minus 1, that is 2 minus 1. So the last number should be k is equals to 1. Okay, starting from k equals to 0, and in our case, the last number is 1. Okay? Then um we can find r so r will basically be equal to the root of the root part so in this case z is equals to five i because it's just the root of five uh, i meaning that uh, the real part is zero and the imaginary part is five like that so to find um, r to find r we say the real part which is zero squared so which is zero squared plus the imaginary part which is 5 squared so this will give us um, 0 squared that is 0 then here 5 so this would be 0 0 plus 5 squared that is um, 25 then this simplifies to 0 plus 5 which is root of 25 which would give us 5 so a note here the the value of R will never be negative, will never be negative. So that is something that you should note. So R in this case is equals to 5. Then we find theta as well. So theta is equals to tan inverse of the imaginary part, which is 5, over the real part, which is 0. Now here you have to be very careful. When you punch this on your calculator, you find that it is undefined so what you do is if you find that it is undefined you make a simple argand plane and on your argand plane you locate where is so x is equals to the real part <clears throat> so x is equals to the real part so our real part here is zero and y is the imaginary part which is five so you locate them on the argand plane so five which is the imaginary part will be along this route. So this is where five is and zero is here. Then you, you connect from zero, from zero comma zero to there. So this is where the again plane is. And the angle, you consider the angle from the positive X axis all the way to that. So you count angles from the positive axis going to that. So in this case, it is from zero going to that, which is 90 degrees. So our theta here is basically equal to 90 degrees. 90 degrees in radians, this is pi over two, okay? Let me give another example. Suppose we had z is equals to, say, um, what would, let's say negative, or let's say zero minus, minus 2i so for instance 0 minus 2i so if we had z equals to this in this case this is also undefined for theta because to tan inverse of um, 2 over 0 so this is also undefined actually negative 2 over 0 so but what you do is you go on your argon plane you will look for 0 so 0 is here so 0 is there then negative 2 is there so this is where negative 2 is. Then you consider the positive x-axis. That is where you start uh, counting from. So from the positive x-axis all the way to negative 2 there, this angle is 270 degrees. So meaning that your theta in this case, theta will be equals to 270 degrees. So this is something that you should just note, and I am just teaching it here so that... Uh, in case of um, those problems you have an idea <clears throat> yes so yeah so basically that's um, that's it then um, 
from here so we have our theta we have everything that we need so now these values of k we have k we have two values of k we have k equals to zero and k is equals to one so we start with when k when k is equals to zero so when k is equals to zero z to the power n so we just write z will be equal to n is um two square root so n is two so that is two which is just two there's no need to put that for two because the square root of it's good as not put in there but i'm just putting it there so square root of r so r is um what is r so we found r which is five open brackets cos of theta our theta is pi over two plus two pi k our k is zero then all over n our n is two plus we do the same thing for sine so sine um all right so once we put in everything there it's just time to simplify so we have a root of so that is root of five we can just write it as that so root of five then inside here we have um, cos of um, so two pi times zero that would be zero so this is pi over two all over two then uh plus i sign it will essentially be the same pi over two over two of which this when simplified is just a pi over four and how it becomes pi over four is this we have pi over two on the numerator so pi over two divided by two which is just two over one so when changed to multiplication that is pi over two times one over two so this becomes pi over four so we write that so z is essentially root of five open brackets plus pi over four plus i sine pi over four so depending on how strict your 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 lecturers are you can just punch this directly on your calculator cos pi over four that is uh cos um 45 degrees in rate in in degrees so that is cos 45 so cos 45 that is about root of two over two. so that is root of two over two plus i root of two over two so essentially sine 45 which is sine pi over four is also uh uh, what is also root of two over two then we have times root of five so i was saying depending on how strict your lecturers are you can just punch in the course 45 you have this in decimals and that in decimals so uh, for this for the exercise that i'll give i'll just uh, i'd rather have you punch this in decimals then we'll look at how we can uh um do in radicals like this so root of 45 so yeah so basically we distribute the root of 5 so this times that that would be root of 5 times root of 2 all over 2 plus i root of 5 times root of 2 over 2 and basically that is um, the first solution so this is the first solution when k is equals to um k is equals to k is equals to zero so but here you can punch this on your calculator so that you have decimals if your lecturers are not strict so now let's do the same for k is equals to one remember we have two values of k so when k is equals to one our z is equals to the nth root of r then we have cos theta plus 2 pi k all over n plus i sine theta plus 2 pi k all over n like that then um, we just plug in we have everything our n is equals to 2 our theta is equals to pi over 2 our what else our k is equals to 0 then we have our r which is 
equal to 5 so we punch we put that so our z is essentially equal to 2 5 then we have cos of theta which is pi over pi over 2 plus 2 pi k is 1 so we say times 1 all over 2 and we do the same for sine that would be sine pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 then we simplify so square root of something is just as good as writing it without the 2 here but if it's for cube root you write the 2 so that is square root of 5 then inside here we have cos we simplify this would be 5 pi over 2 then all over 2 plus i sine we start with the numerator so that again is 5 pi over 2 over 2 and essentially this is root of 5 then cos 5 pi over 4 plus i sine 5 pi over 4 so um this is essentially 5 then negative root of 2 over 2 minus i root of 2 over 2 but for those that are using uh calculators or you want it to be in decimals if you don't know the 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 radicals of that <clears throat> so you just punch 5 times 180 so 5 times 180 over 4 so that will give you 225 so this will give you 225 <clears throat> degrees so now cos 225 which is a uh, negative 0 0.707 and um, sine the same angle 225 again will give you negative 0 0.707 then you can distribute like that then uh, there is no problem with that so but basically from here um, I distribute and uh, I have z equal to negative 5 root of 5 root of 2 over 2 minus i root of 5 root of 2 over 2 so essentially that's about it so now let me just uh, put up some questions for you that you will try out. So just these questions, find the third root of i, the third root of 4 plus 3i, the third root of 8, and secondly, find the square root of um, 4 and 3i. So these are two questions that you're going to attempt, and I'll be waiting for your submission. Um, for any you can ask, have a good evening for now.